you all for coming. I don't think you've come to see me. You've come to hear about the title. <coughs> this is the first time I've given this talk, so I'm a bit nervous, and I'll be very grateful for your criticisms. You can be blunt. You can't frighten me with your criticism. It will be very helpful. It's based on a book that I'm writing called Why Can't a Woman Be More Like a Man, which will be published next, ne <laughs> next spring. <laughs> However, the title I really wanted, Why Isn't a Man More Like a Woman? And you'll see why I come to that in a moment. Because one of the things I'm going to say is that men are basically modified women. But we'll come to that all in a moment. And so what it's really about is to try and understand. I am a, di I'm a biologist, <clears throat> and I wanted to understand the biological differences between men and women and how much the differences between men and women were determined by biology as distinct from social distinct from, from so, so, so social factors. How different are our brains? Um, what role has evolution played? And just do remember, you are nothing more than a society of cells, OK? You do know, you do say that every night before you go to sleep. I, I, <laughs> you are a society of cells, and that determines everything. And the way cells function is largely by determining what proteins there are. Genes are boring but they provide the code. Genes do nothing. They just sit there, totally passive. But they provide the code for making proteins, and proteins determine how cells work. It's, <coughs> lo it's largely proteins. And it's quite interesting. In an interview to mark his 70th birthday, Stephen Hawking, the famous physicist, admitted that he spent most of the day thinking about women. You know what he said? They are, he said, a complete mystery. Now, if one looks back in history, the striking thing about men and women is that men have discriminated against women over, for as far back as you want to go. You know, there has been no time when men have not discriminated uh, uh, against women. They were given the prime, men were given the primary responsibility. Women were there to look after the home and to look after the children and has been subordinate. And if you just look back at one of the stories, I'm not going to take you through all those details. Think of the legend of Pandora. Do you remember the legend of Pandora? Let me remind you. And that of Eve. Pandora was the Greek one. And she had taken, she had given this very sacred bottle. And she let things slip out. And evil, therefore, came onto the world for the first time. And I don't have to remind you what Eve did. So in two completely different cultures, Greek and Christianity, the women are the cause of all evil. <laughs> I forgive you, I don't think it's true. <laughs> now, I think you have to realize that a crucial thing is we're talking about men and women, is that how you develop really matters. And as I told you, I am a developmental biologist, so this matters a great, a great deal to me. And as Mark Twain said, what would men be without women? Scarce, sir mighty scarce. <laughs> the best thing about my talk are my funny quotations. <laughs> now, the early development of the embryo is identical for men and women, OK? I see someone's nodding, he knows. <laughs> OK. The sexual differences begin to develop later, and it's really because if there's a Y chromosome, that comes from the man, that causes the embryo to develop testes. And testes cause the uh, result in the secretion of testosterone. And therefore, that modifies the developing embryo to develop as a male. Because the Y chromosome is the male chromosome. So all you ladies have XX chromosomes. We poor males have X and Y. And the Y chromosome makes the embryo masculine by causing a testis to develop. There are other genes too, I'm not going to take you through, but the main thing is that it leads, the testis leads to the secretion of testosterone, which modifies the embryo to develop as a male. So in that sense, males are modified females because this test, the Y chromosome has modified female development to develop into a male. I, I, I hope that's clear. And 
You can ask, why do males have breasts and nipples? We don't feed many babies, I have to say, and they're not terribly sensitive or attractive. <laughs> and the reason is that they developed in females, and that since males are modified females, they were just left there when the embryo developed. It didn't have any influence on them whatsoever. And just let me remind you that testosterone, you know, the male hormone, is crucial. And there is an, a, a genetic illness called CAH, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which results in there being more testosterone in the womb than normal. And I'll come back to the impact of that because we can see what effect it has. But first of all, let's have a quick look at evolution. Now, on the whole... If you look at the literature on the subject, most, there are many books about, about the differences between men and women. Evolution is not something that most of them even touch on, but it's very important. The, the, first of all, it's just worth thinking, why bother to have two sexes? Wouldn't it? It would be less fun to have just one, but why? Because I, I'm not going to take you through, it's quite a complicated biological problem, but it, it's a way of generating more variety. And evolution cares about variety. And just let me tell you, evolution only cares about reproduction. It doesn't give a damn about anything else. It only cares how reproductive you are. I, I, I don't want to take you through. And that's why when you get old, evolution says, bye-bye, Dolly Gray. You've reproduced. I don't give a damn about you anymore. <laughs> now, what evolution did make sure is that both sexes wanted to get, needed to get pleasure from sex because that's what reproduction is about. And care of young children also had to be genetically determined, particularly in the mothers. And this has a great influence. Yes, maybe it's a little genetically determined in the fathers, but if I look at you and <laughs> I think about you and your husbands, yes, the fathers can be, but nothing compared to the thing. And the other things is just worth remembering from evolution. You must not mate with relatives. Brothers must not mate with sisters. You must not mate with a first cousin. Genetically, it's disastrous. That's incest. And this is also genetically determined for both men and women not to mate with them. And Charles Darwin had, I'm afraid to tell you, rather negative views of women. Man is more courageous, pugnacious, energetic than women and has a more inventive genius. Women seems to differ from man in mental disposition, chiefly in their greater tenderness and less selfishness. And I think he's probably bloody well right on the second, on the second one. They are, and I'll come back to the tenderness in a moment. So there was mating behaviour historically and it was probably the most vigorous and strongest males who had access to, to women, had the easiest access to women. And in general, it is that men more than women have, have a greater desire for casual sex. I don't think I have to, pers uh, 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 I don't think I have to persuade you on that score. Um, women are more really concerned about relationships, um, but men will do almost anything for sex. Well, I mean, if there's a nice relationship too, how very nice. Now, <laughs> in ancient societies, the supplies of food were largely provided by women, while the, when men went out, you know, protecting and hunting for big food, it's the women who developed agriculture. It's very important to do. They made major technical contributions. Women's food-gathering activity led to animal domestication and agriculture. You women discovered agriculture, I have to tell you. You also discovered cooking, and you also evolved um, making pots. All that was done by women. And when your agriculture became better, the men stopped going out hunting and came home and took over all your inventions and took them for themselves. I'm terribly sorry, that's the way things went. But just remember, they then became, because of their physical strength, became more dominant. 